Yo, welcome to Mellow Underscore Match Carps YouTube. Today, we're going to be looking at a game of Mewtwo, and I chose this game specifically because we're going to focus on how to approach a matchup when it is not a deck that you have ever played before. So we're going to do a bit of a VOD review, I guess, of a game I played on Ladder. And in this game, we are going to be playing against a deck that is not a meta deck. It's still pretty good. They're still threatening us. It's not like an auto win or anything like that, but we're going to go over not only the Mewtwo gameplay, but also what you have to do when you're facing against a deck and it's kind of concepts of like, I don't know this matchup, what do I do? Because we see it in these online tournaments consistently. A deck will come out of nowhere, do very well, and then it never seen from again. It's kind of like it took that one tournament by storm. People didn't know what to do. In fact, I've done that before too. My Spirit Tomb deck that I made a video on a couple months ago, I took it to a tournament that like same week. I got top eight in that tournament. You've never seen Spirit Tomb see success again. It was like people weren't prepared. They weren't really sure of what numbers I could hit. You know, I was smacking their VMAXs out of nowhere for 300 damage on like turn two and three. And people did not adjust properly. So that's what we're going to focus on. So this is the current Mewtwo list that I'm at. Um, there are going to be some cuts made. I've played, it's only 30 games. So I played 30 games tracking with this deck and... There are some cards I just think we're going to end up cutting. The Naganadel, the Surfetch, they feel like we just never really use them. And I'd like to add some more consistency probably, but we'll see. So we just need to test a little more, but it feels like the deck is just kind of missing something. Because as a whole, I use Pikaram a lot, I use Raichu a lot, or I use Mewtwo to copy them, of course. And not much else. So... I'm not 100% sold on this being better than Pikaram. I think this might look more like Pikaram in the future, but I want to keep stuff like Greninja and Vile Plume are definitely very strong, and Incineroar has been good. But I've won a lot of games, just having a two energy attack has been super nice. Anyway, so this is the list, and let's go ahead and get into the game. Like I said, it's going to be a VOD review. So we are... There we go. All right. So... We're going to choose to go first. Notice, too, I know this person. Uh, this is Ethan, the person who runs the Hegster tournaments on Mondays and Fridays. So there will be some emotes that are thrown out there, but uh, don't normally don't normally emote spam your opponent. <laughs> okay, so they're going to make us go first. Totally fine. We're going to get a mulligan. Again, no big deal. We don't know what we're up against. Like I said, it's not going to be meta, but we're going to start the matchup like it is meta, and that's kind of a big deal. Okay, so we get our Bolton start. That's quite nice. They're going to hit us with a you have a good deck. That's where I assume it's a mirror match. So at this point, we see a Cocoa Prism. I assume it's a mirror match. In the Pikaram mirror match, you have a couple choices of what you can really do. You can go the Pikaram route or you can go the Mewtwo route. In this deck specifically, <laughs> hit him with the you have a good deck back. In this deck specifically, Mewtwo is our best attacker. And there's one way to power one up. So we're going to look. We have a Coco. That's a big deal. We should be looking how many Auroras we have, too. Because I'm assuming they play Hammers. We don't look at the Auroras. That's a misplay. But what we can do is we have Coco. We should be checking if we have Auroras. Because then we have the opportunity next turn to KO their Mewtwo if they go with a Mewtwo. So we can either get the full Blitz off, or we can potentially get a KO on them. All right. So they're going to go. And so far, so good. It, it still looks like a regular old match. Uh, the Mewtwo is also a debatable play there. Now, now that I'm looking back at it, it's kind of like, I don't play Great Catcher in this list. I play Great Catcher on my Pikaram list, and we only have a research in hand, so I'm not 100% sold that Mewtwo play was correct. They throw the Swell down. Always throw the Swell down first, unless you want to use it as discard fodder. They've gotten rid of two switches. So in the mirror match, you're kind of thinking like, okay, that's a big deal. Two switches gone. They probably want to have a balloon in the active. And now suddenly we realize this is not a normal matchup. <laughs> they have two capes of toughness. They have a Latio, So maybe I'm thinking, okay, it's a mirror match. And there's a clean research. So now they're going to try and get out of the active. And they're going to try to electrify. There's also a double. So this is turning out to be more like a welder box, except not welders. <laughs> There's the turbo patch heads, yeah. 
So some missequencing by, by, by my opponent as well. So I want to point out, they used, got rid of two switches, and then they put a cape of toughness on the bench. Instead of that, what they could have gotten is got rid of the cape of toughness, switched into the Bolton, and then they would have been good to go. They wouldn't have had to hit that turbo patch heads. So uh, we did a video on sequencing not that long ago. It is a big deal. Never punished, but that's fine. If they got punished, this would have been a much less interesting game. Get rid of another double. They play turbo patch so they can power stuff up out of nowhere. This is gonna be uh, this is gonna be something. This is where it's potentially, oh, I'm gonna panic. I don't know what to do. We're not gonna panic. The electrified Latios, that makes sense. So Latios both hits our Mewtwo for weakness, what well, hits us for 240, and we can't attack it except with a bolted next turn. So Latios is something that to me is going to be our biggest threat. So if you're playing up against a deck you don't know. You kind of want to figure out what is their game plan. Our opponent's game plan is clearly going to be bring out attackers to counter our stuff. In this case, Latios is a good example of that. It hits Mewtwo really hard and cannot be hit back by the Mewtwo. Also, they have a Cape of Toughness. That's a big deal. So this Bolton has 250 HP. That double on the bench has, uh, what is it, effectively 240 HP, if I remember correctly. And then a Cape of Toughness would bring that up to 290. So they have some very, very thick two prize. Okay, we get saved with the top deck. We're going to go grab a Vile Plume, bench the Raichu. Benching the Raichu is a big deal here. They've shown me they have a Psychic Attacker. I uh, don't want to overinvest in Mewtwo's. That would be a big, big, big issue. So we want to get a Raichu set up just in case they play other Psychic Attackers, their own Mewtwo, something like that. Okay, so now we have a boss for next turn. So we're going to go ahead and attach and Electrify. Put one there, and we should put Run on the Raichu. Good, good. So turn one. We got the energy down on the Mewtwo. I'm still not 100% sold that was the correct play at all. Like, looking back, I think it would have been a better play to have benched the Raichu, gone with the day day change, and see what we get. Because we had to research, so now our Mewtwo is vulnerable on the bench, and they can get the first strike. So I don't like that play that I made, even though we really need our, uh, our Mewtwo in this matchup, because... That's, that's our deck. We're a very bad Pikaram deck, but a very good Mewtwo deck. But now, we're good to go. We have Vileplume in the discard, so if they pull out a hammer, we can still get the KO with our Mewtwo. We have Pikaram in the discard, so if they don't pull out a hammer, we can uh, full blitz. And we have the Aurora, we have the Switch, we have the boss. So we're good to go if we do not get Mark. So again, we're really figuring out what is my opponent trying to do. In this case, it's, it's very clear. They're going to hit us with that Latios. That is their goal. They're going to go Latios, they're going to go Boltoned, and then they're, they're going to finish off with a double. So we never want to go to one prize if we can help it. Okay, we've already got the game planned out. We're going to attach the Aurora. What I'm considering here is whether or not to get rid of the Surfetch. I decide not to get rid of the Surfetch. Surfetch hits double for weakness. Double with a cape has too much HP to deal with. So this also goes back to as figure out what is your opponent's game plan. Their game plan is very clear. They're going to feed us three two prizers. Bolton, Latios, double. We need something to answer that double. So as of now, our game plan has Sir fetched in. They cannot KO this Mewtwo unless they pull off their own Mewtwo play next turn. We're going to have an answer for that. Don't worry. Well, not really, but kind of. <laughs> There, there is an answer to their own Mewtwo play next turn. So we want to keep the Surfetch because Surfetch can KO that double. We're going to boss the Latios. Latios is the biggest threat on their board. We remove two energies, so that's minus 60 damage for Bolton. And they have to use Coco if they want to get those energies back. That's a big deal. And we are most afraid. We are most like uncomfortable with them attacking with Latios. Because then suddenly we have to attack with Bolton and our Bolton is now damaged. So Latios can actually KO our Bolton. So again, we're figuring out what does our opponent want to do next turn. They probably want to boss KO our Bolton. If we had left it in the active, they just KO it. And probably KO it with the Latios, actually. Because then we're in a terrible place. We have the boss around their Latios. We have nothing on our board that's powered up. So we have to get our Coco or an E-Switch or something like that. 
So we figured out what is their biggest threat? What is their game plan? Double check the psychic weakness. It is weak to psychics. So we can go in full blitz. And because they can technically respond with their own Mewtwo KO, we go and power up the Raichu Raichu. So Raichu can GX their Boltoned. Raichu can GX their Dub Wool. Or we have a paralyzed play on their own. So they're hurting a little bit, but that's okay. Well, I mean, it's obviously okay. <laughs> I'm rooting for me here. Uh, we also have the Surfetched ready to go, so we could potentially make a play next turn if we have to, where we can go attach Aurora, bench the Surfetched, Marnie, Hope to hit Coco Prism. And there's an Indeedy. Okay. So at this point, I do panic a little bit. Uh, not like panic play, but I'm like, oh no. Wait, this thing hits really, really, really hard. This thing Oko's our Mewtwo. This is actually a very big deal. So they're going to be looking for Pop Coco E Switch. I'm not sure if they play E Switch or Pop Coco Turbo Patch. We know they play Turbo Patch. We don't really have an answer for an indeed. So now their game plan looks to be KO with Indeedy, followed by Bolted. They miss. <clears throat> Super lucky for us. So go ahead and hit. Now, misplay on my opponent's end. Had that Cape of Toughness gone on the Indeedee, I actually would not have a response this turn. But because that Cape of Toughness went on the double, we, uh, we can KO that Indeedee. And that's what we want to do. The Indeedee is a threat. The Indeedee is a humongous threat. That thing will Oko not only our Bolton, but if we put a five energies, a fifth energy on the Raichu, it KOs Raichu, right? What, four energies is 6, 4, 240, 250? Yeah, so if we put another energy on the Raichu to GX, the Indeedee Oko's it. So we are terrified of that Indeedee. They're debating where we put that. I figure the Mewtwo's going to get knocked out for sure. Whatever, we don't need a balloon there. This is where we're debating. Okay, we can do several things here. We can hit the active. We can dig with research. I mean, we would always play a support. We can dig with research. And see if we can hit the active hard enough with like our Bolton, because we have four, eight, a ninth energy would get the KO on the Bolton, and then we have our Mewtwo safe on the bench. But the, clearly, they want that in DD. Their game plan is going to be hope that we don't KO this Bolton, get the Indeedy powered up, and then let the Indeedy run through to finish the game. So yes, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And then it is Dark Week, so we're going to have to use Tag Bolt GX. That's fine. It is totally okay to use that GX attack. We need to get rid of this thing. We have established, okay, this is the biggest threat right now. Anytime you're playing against a deck that you don't know the game plan, sit there and figure out what is their game plan. Try and do it on the fly. And then figure out what is the biggest threat. So we figured out that indeed is the threat. They don't have much now. They can KO me with a Boltoned. They can KO me with a Double. Stamped to two, stamped to two into a very, very good hand. <clears throat> so now, you may be saying, how are we going to deal with the Bolton? How are we going to deal with a double? We don't care. We are going to aim for that Dedenne. That Dedenne has 160 HP, Raichu hits 160 damage. So another thing, figure out your win conditions. It's easy to get caught up and say, wait, I can't deal with a double. This double is going to hit for 240 damage. I can't KO it. It is 290 HP. Who cares? There's a juicy Dedenne on the bench. That's what we're going to go for. So that is our game plan to win this game. We don't care about the double. We'll paralyze it if we have to. But <laughs> again, don't spam emotes unless you know them. There's another Dedenne. Okay, so there's no way they go like Scrapper, Double Big Charm, or anything like that. Energy on the double. They attack with the bolt, and the Bolton's safe. There's nothing I can really do to this bolt. <clears throat> they take their three prizes. Thankfully, we did get stamped into a Dedenne. So we get to dig for that boss. We have a big deck, though. And we top deck a Crobat. <laughs> little lucky, little lucky, but you take those. And there's the boss's orders. So again, we don't have to worry about, okay, we don't have to KO this Bolton. We don't have to do that. We figured out, our, we mapped out our prizes. We know that we're going to go 2-2-2. Two, two, two. We figured out our opponent's game plan was going to be the... Uh, 
they wanted to hit with Wadios. Eventually, they wanted to do the Ndidi play. Thankfully, they missed the Ndidi play. That would have been very bad for us had they gotten the KO that turn. And the game could have gone very, very, very different. Then we go Retreat and Tandem Shock for the knockout. So anytime you're playing against a deck, you don't know what it is. Really think and ask yourself, what are they trying to do? What is the biggest threat to me? What is the biggest threat to my deck? In this case, it's Psychic Attackers. It's nothing else. One thing that I didn't do, because the option never came up, and I'm not sure if they play any single prizers, but we can never go down to one prize either in this matchup, both because of Stamp, but because that means double Okos. So being at two prizes is good because the double cannot Oko our Raichu Raichu, and that's a really big deal. It also can't KO the Mewtwo, obviously. So that's another thing that we did in this matchup. I'm not sure if it mattered because they never gave us the opportunity to go to odd prizes, but that's another thing to think about when you're playing against these matchups. So like, look at your opponent, look at their board, try and figure out what is their goal. And this is where card knowledge matters. The more cards you know, the more likely you're going to figure this stuff out and then kind of figure out like, okay, this is what they have. This is what they're doing. This is what they want to do to me. I'm going to stop them from doing what they want to do to me. So hopefully you can apply this knowledge a little bit anytime you run up against something random. On the ladder, happens all the time, right? Hopefully you can apply this knowledge and not get caught off guard by these like random janky decks that you run into. So hopefully you like this style of video. We're going to do several VOD reviews. They're not all going to be like against random decks necessarily, but I kind of like doing the VOD review instead of the gameplay because it lets me look back at my gameplay too. Like turn one grabbing that Mewtwo. Sketchy play. I'm... I'm pretty unsure if that is the correct play or not, just given what our hand was at the time. Anyway, uh, like, comment, subscribe, YouTube stuff. Check out the Twitch channel as well, twitch.tv slash mellow underscore magikarp. I'm doing some try hard Players Cup 3 testing over the next several days or weeks even, because we have quite a while for that. So uh, if you're interested in try hard testing, come watch, because we're trying to figure out what deck is good and what builds are good. Anyway, I will catch you all in the next video.